Example five now, compare two polynomial functions. Carolina's profit function, y equals p of x, is represented by the graph. Keo's profit from selling x flower pots can be modeled by the function shown. So look at Carolina's wind chimes. We have a function um, here, starting from 0, comma, negative 64. Was that the equation that we were looking at um, for our try it? I think so, right? Oh, never mind. It's a different one. Oh, it's the, it's, it's the one from the example. Yeah, so from example four, it's connected. Um, and then Kiel's flower pots would be r of x equals x times x minus 3 times x minus x. And so looking at the profit, you can answer some questions we have. Find the y-intercept of each function. So you already see by the graph that Carolina's wind chimes would be negative um, 64 for the for the y-intercept because if you plug in 0 for your x, it's going to be negative 64. Who would lose more money if neither person sold any items? Let's look at Kiyo's power pots. So if you plug in 0 for x, 0 times negative uh, negative 3 would be 0 times 10 minus 0 would be 10, but then you multiply that by 0, so it's 0, right? So then Kyo has no startup cost. She didn't have to pay anything. Carolina had to pay for her materials, and she had to make wind chimes. Um, so if she doesn't sell anything, she loses money by $64. But if um, Kyo doesn't sell anything, then she doesn't really lose any money. She just doesn't sell anything. So the one is that for, um, for each graph would represent how much money you initially spent before selling. Okay. So looking at those winer steps, we can compare um, where they're starting from and also um, how much they'll lose money if they don't sell anything. Let's look at part B, interpret the end behavior of the functions. So looking at the graph here, it's very, very easy to find the end behavior, right? So end behavior here are going downwards um, for Carolina, right? So we can describe as x increases, y decreases, but in this situation, x is number of items. So as number of item increases or number of item decreases, the profit will go down. So the maximized profit will be at um, 9, right? Um, 9 comma 90. We figured this out in the last example. Um, 9 comma 98. So from 9 comma 98, whether we go to the right or left, um, our profit is going to go down. So um, we need to make sure that we're maximizing the profit by looking at our graph. But yes, interpret the end behavior. So um, for Carolina, um, it's going to be as, as number of items decreases. As, well, it's not possible to decrease even further, right? We're not going to have a negative number of items. So as the number of items increases from, from 9, um, the, the profit will decrease. And then looking at um, Kiyo's power pots, we have to look at this uh, equation. And um, it's kind of hard to look at it right now. So we're going to change this to standard form. So let's simplify our equation. So r of x, we can multiply x out and distribute it with the binomial here, x minus 3. And then we can multiply these binomial using your fo the for method. And then simplify. You will combine like terms to get negative x cubed plus 13x squared minus 30x. So again, if I write this down, I think a step is missing here. But you should, you should be, you should know already. But um, let me write it down for you. Negative x squared times negative x x squared times negative x would be x cubed. And then negative 3x times 10 would be negative 30x. 
then negative 3 times negative x will be positive 3x squared. And then you add the like terms, and you'll be able to get this trinomial. And if we look at the leading coefficient, the leading coefficient is negative. What does that mean? So your parent function for a cube root is, is like this. It looks like this. Okay, so as your as your x decreases or increases, um, your y decreases when the x decreases. And when your x increases, your y increases. And the end behavior will always stay the same if you have a positive coefficient. But then if the leading coefficient is negative, then you start with a negative slope. And then you have a turning point. And then you have another turning point because you have three powers, okay? So then you will have an opposite end behavior. So as x increases, the profit will decrease. So as x reaches infinity, the, uh, our values for y would reach negative infinity. So Keo and Carolina, they would have the same end behavior when x reaches in, uh, positive infinity. So we can say Kyo and Carolina each have a finite number of items they should sell to maximize profits. Okay, I hope I hope it made sense. Let's look at try number five. Compare the profit functions of two additional market sellers modeled by the graph of f and the equation g of x equals parentheses x plus one times parentheses phi minus x. Compare and interpret the y intercepts of these functions and their end behavior. So we have a graph of f, and then we have an equation. Compare and interpret the y-intercepts. So first of all, figure out the y-intercepts, and then compare them. And then um, and you should talk about the end behavior as we did in example five. So pause the video and see if you can uh, answer this by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? All right, so for the graph, you can see that the winer step is zero, right? Yeah. Um, the winer step of G could be figured out by plugging in a, uh, zero for X, right? So zero plus one times five minus zero, and that's just gonna be five. And so we can already tell that the, G, the winer step for G is greater than Y. So let's write that down. The y-intercept of f is 0. The y-intercept of g is 5. So what does that mean? So the seller using g earns $5 while producing no products. Interesting. But the seller using f is 0 earns zero dollars. At least it's not negative, right? And let's look at the end behavior. So look at the end behavior for function f. This is a profit function, so of course we're not gonna look at the negative part, um, but um, in, the con in the real context, but maybe there is a context um, that allows negative numbers for x. So here, in this triad, let's look at both and behaviors. So the end behavior of function f is when x reaches positive infinity, when x increases, y increases. When x decreases, y decreases. So let's um, let's describe that using using our our notations. So the end behavior. M behavior of f is when x is if x reaches or approaches oh it's Plus 
which is positive infinity y approaches negative wait positive infinity okay and and if x and as x approaches negative infinity y approaches negative infinity okay so when you are writing it with the math term you can say as x approaches positive infinity y approaches positive infinity and as x approaches negative infinity y approaches negative infinity for f and then for um for g how do we know well first we need to simplify um, you can use the flow method to simplify uh, to multiply them out x times 5 is 5x and then time plus x times negative x would be negative x squared and then plus 5 minus x and then you can simplify that and then order it to get a standard form plus 4x plus 5 and then you can you can see the coefficient leading coefficient so if your leading coefficient for your quadratic is positive then it looks like this it opens upward if your leading coefficient is negative it opens downward right so um, we can already tell by the leading coefficient that it's going to look like this graph where it um, looks downward. So this is your end behavior. As x approaches positive infinity, y will approach negative infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. And what does it mean? Well, let me type the end behavior first. But this means that when the seller is using, for the seller using f, after five products, the more products he makes and the more money he makes. But the seller using G only makes money for um, X values that are greater than zero and less than five. So let me write all of that down. The M behavior of G of X is as X approaches positive infinity y approaches negative infinity and as x approaches negative infinity y approaches negative infinity okay and what does this mean this means that for the seller using f after five products the more products he makes the more money he makes the seller using G only makes money for zero less than X less than five so any values greater than zero and less than five okay so this is how we use um, our polynomial functions to apply it in real life. You can look at their y-intercepts, you can look at the, um, the end behaviors to see where, where the graph is headed towards. All right, let's wrap up our lesson by looking at the concept summary. Adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials. 
Um, in order to add polynomials, you should use the associative and commutative properties to group like terms. And then you're going to use the distributive property to, to combine like terms. Okay, and make sure you simplify them by combining like terms. And when you subtract it, make sure you multiply the negatives out for the second polynomial, and then you're going to subtract them. Okay, you do the same thing as you add it. And when you multiply, you're going to multiply um, each term by each term in the next polynomial. So every term has to be multiplied out with each other. Okay, so please make sure that um, you understand and you can, you can perform this with accuracy and precision. All right, so that was, um, that was it for this lesson, adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials, 3-2. We'll continue with the next lesson in the next video. Bye!